Hello everyone and welcome back to another high level match of StarCraft 2. What I've got for you today is a best of three series of Terran versus Protoss between two channel favorites. Now one of these guys, the Protoss here, I have not casted in quite some time. So I'm excited to see exactly how well he will do against the other guy, who I've probably casted a little bit too much over the last couple of months. Spotting right here in the bottom left hand corner of Inside and Out, playing with the Red Terran SCVs from South Korea. We have one of the best Terran players in the world, and his name is Byun. Now, I don't think that Byun really requires any additional introduction. He likes to play that macro focus style while sending pretty much every single unit that he's got towards the other side of the map. Preferably inside of a medevac, just to try and be as obnoxious as possible, right? You're probably well familiar with Byun at this point, because I have quite literally casted him, uh, I want to say like two dozen times over the last three months, if I were to make a guess. Anyways, the opponent. I don't think I've casted him a single time over like the last three months, so that's a little bit of a shame. Playing right here with the blue Protoss probes from Taiwan, we're looking at Hasse's main nexus. Now, if you're a more casual viewer of StarCraft 2, you may not even be familiar with the name Hass. Hass is one of those guys who... He came up, I want to say, in like 2016, 2017 or so, as an absolute cheeser. I'm sure he was playing the game before that, but that's the very least the first time that he really came on my radar. He even at some point made it to the grand finals of a DreamHack tournament, where he went up against Serral in the grand finals and he got absolutely destroyed. But <laughs> basically all the way there, including the grand finals too, he was playing a hyper aggressive, hyper cheesy strategy, coming up with his own build orders. He was very much so the kind of guy for example, who would go for that immortal juggling, a lot of shield battery shenanigans, that void ray cheese. I've seen a bunch of Tempest flying across the map in the earlier stages of the game. Very, very aggressive player on the whole. That being said, since Blizzard obviously has taken steps to, well, this is years ago, uh, to prevent those builds from being as potent as they used to be, Hass was forced to adjust his playstyle too, and it's almost as if he went into hiding for some time, where we didn't really hear a whole lot from him for quite a while. The last few times I've seen him play, and again, this is a little while ago, that is a really quick Twilight Council, by the way, interesting. Uh, the last few times that we've seen him play, he's been going for a... So he used to play like a, an aggressive cheesy style, now he plays like a, a macro cheesy style instead, where he likes to go for an expansion, and then another expansion, and then he pulls out a gas, and he goes upwards of like 100 probes, and he just sends zealot after zealot after zealot towards the other side of the map. It's a very zergy approach instead, which... Yeah, it's pretty fun. That being said, don't get me wrong, this is very much so, in my mind, a heavy Beyond favorite game, so... Hopefully Haas can, uh, yeah, give his opponent a run for his money. Excellent control here once again, coming out of Micro Jackson, keeping that Reaper alive over here. Uh, two Reapers, not supposed to win against that Stalker. This is, I believe, a double gas opener here from Byun. So he's got himself a, a good amount of aggression here coming out of this early game already. Getting another Pro. Not bad at all. Reapers right now, being annoying. Going back in. That Stalker actually is in a little bit of trouble. Uh, another Stalker just popped out of the gateway. Charge, by the way, is coming up, which is kind of funny. Okay, he does get that Stalker in the end. Gets that probe in the end, too. And yeah, despite the fact that Bjorn has done quite a bit of damage here with his early game units, it obviously came at the expense of a much later command center on the low ground. So only just now is when we see that orbital command coming up. Anyway, Haas going for a super quick charge upgrade. Generally speaking, whenever we see a, a quick Twilight Council, it is to make sure that the Blink is coming up nice and early. Obviously, getting Blink going is really nice because you can get damage done on the other side of the map. Charge can be pretty good too, primarily when it comes to going for all-ins, but Haas has already gone for a third Nexus, so that is not the case. He does have a Robo Facility right now coming up as well, and he's going to need it in case his opponent decides to send those Benchies with Cloak across the map. We don't mind drop coming in. Okay, uh, being obnoxious, there's that Reaper from earlier, once again being annoying, but this time around, okay, he does get surrounded. Another hit right there on that Widow Mind, though, destroys another Stalker, and yeah, this is where that income advantage, despite the fact that he hasn't killed that many workers, it is gonna go in Beyond's favor, because of course those probes, they were not mining. Has desperately trying to stabilize here, right? So, that is a second Forge already coming up here. <laughs> so, it's... Interesting positioning on the gateway and the cybercore. Very quick Twilight Council. 
Very quick fort. And then a second fort as well. So this is this is a super greedy build. A super greedy build once again. So if Bjorn can survive the early game without all too much trouble, he's going to be in a fantastic spot. And so far, he's done very, very good in that department. In the meantime, though, on the left side of the map, we've got a Banshee flying across. The Banshee cloaking field is going to finish up. And I was wondering what that blue dot on the minimap was. It is indeed going to be an observer going towards the other side of the map. Okay, Blink is coming up on the back of this too. Widow Mind Drop, once again, heading on over towards uh, another mineral line. This time around, it's going to be the third. The problem is that this is creating a distraction, right? So, he's not making another Observer at this point. That Benchy is getting really close. And the only detection in this game right now for Haas is on the other side of the map. And it doesn't actually see much. It sees another tech lab, but that's all it really sees. It got here a little bit too late. Now the Benchy goes in. Um, recall. We got a recall. We got a recall. Widow Mind Drop being obnoxious once more. Okay. Two probes. Okay, there's the recall on the main base. Fair enough. But that Observer already being annoying. Because it's in the wrong place. Second Banshee. Also available right now. That one is going to go to town at the third base. Natural expansion in a little bit of trouble. Okay. Yeah, this is what happens when you play an ultra greedy build. There's finally that observer coming in. I think it must have still been in surveillance mode on top of that main nexus or something. But this is already so many workers going down. 23 probes. That is too much at this level of play. Yeah. I don't exactly see how you can recover against someone of Bjorn's caliber when you lose that many probes. I mean, he had detection, he just didn't know about the Benshee. How many are you gonna get, Bjorn? Bjorn is never satisfied, man. Okay, cloaks again, because he's got a little bit of energy. Ooh, okay, Benshee's being sacrificed here, but how many probes would it get? Okay, 28 workers killed here. By, I think that one Widow Mine and then also the two Benchies. And in total, 33 probes have gone down. Now, Hess, you've got good upgrades, right? You've got Charge, you've got Blink, you've got 1-1 one, one done. But what in the world is the follow-up going to be? I mean, we've got Charge. You can always go for an all-in if you want to. He is making more and more workers on the back of this. Obviously, off of, yeah, three of those next side, you can get those workers going pretty quickly. But here's the real problem. Bjorn is already marching towards the other side of the map once again. This is Bjorn going in for, I think, a plus one. Yep, a plus one and stim pack attack. He doesn't have combat shields just yet. He doesn't have concussive shells. He doesn't have plus one uh, infantry armor. But he's got an awful lot of units. He's actually hitting a, a couple supply blocks. Yeah, not quite ideal, but he's dropping supply depots out of the high heavens. There are only two command centers available in this game. Now, Zealots are coming in from the back as well. This could actually be pretty good. Okay, those Widow Mines, though, getting some really nice hits in, too. Yeah, has the supply count is just not big enough anymore at this point. I mean, he's making the best of it, though. Yeah, actually holds that fight quite well. He has been remaking the workers. Okay. I want to believe, Haas. It's just that whenever I see any of the top-level players, like, for example, Bjorn, having, like, nearly uh, double your supply, I, I, yeah, I, I have a hard time imagining anyone coming back. There's already a pylon situated here on the right side of the map. I thought for a second that was a probe, ready to plant down a fourth nexus. That would have been absolutely hilarious. Anyways, now finally... The third command center is landed on the low ground. Pion is pretty slow when it comes to his expansions in this game because of the aggression he's been going for. There's no charge, or, well, there is charge, but there's no uh, disruptors, there's no colossus, there's no high templar, there's none of that in Hass's playstyle currently. At least I don't think I've seen him play that a whole lot, so. He's gonna be going just for zealots and stalkers. Uh, these zealots are going on a little field trip. They probably want to set up a wraparound, but. Already, Widow Mines here are burrowed in really good spots. Now, half of the Protoss army... Oh, this is an ugly battle. Yeah, half of that Protoss army was engaging. Mineral Line is starting to be in some trouble. That Widow Mine, okay, does not connect. Good control right here, though, by Bjorn getting in between the Mineral Fields and then also that Vespian Geyser. In the meantime, a little bit of damage was also done on the other side of the map, apparently, but... Yeah, GG is cold. Excellent game right there from Bjorn. Not really missing a beat whatsoever. I mean, obviously, he got a little bit lucky with his Benchies, right? I don't think they were expected to deal that much damage, but... Bjorn mixing up his own playstyle a little bit to throw Haas's build orders off just a little bit as well, and 
apparently it resulted in him getting a couple of benches in without his opponent having a solid amount of detection nearby. Turns out when you lose, what was it, 33 probes in the early game, life gets a little bit tricky. Okay, let's have a look at exactly what Haas does. So, that is a standard pylon, although it's in a weird position. This gateway isn't doing anything. Right? So, data C, it's got this little jump up pad right over here. Normally we see pylon and then a, a gateway cyber core to prevent the reaper from coming in. Despite the fact that the reapers were pretty obnoxious in the previous game, Haas is like, you know what, that's not a problem. I need to maximize the amount of mining that I've got going on here in the early game by building the pylon as close to the mineral line as possible. You could also, I guess, choose to wall this ramp over here instead, again to try and make it more difficult for Terran units to get in. But Haas doesn't do it. Instead, this allows him to go for a 19 Nexus. Is that what we have? Yeah, 19 Nexus. He checks the corner as well just to make sure there's nothing crazy hiding over here. That would be a pretty wild proxy. I don't think I'm a huge fan of this building positioning here in the early game, though. Like, this just makes it unnecessarily difficult here against someone like, for example, Bjorn. I mean, do you really not want to make it harder on him to get into your base? Anyways, now the second gas geyser comes up as well. Okay. Curious to see if he's once again gonna go into a Twilight Council or if he's gonna opt to do something a little differently. I do feel like the Twilight Council is probably his bread and butter. In the meantime, Bjorn going for a quick double gas once again. We've got a quick factory because of that. He's doing a lot of similar things as in the previous game, which makes a lot of sense. Okay. Cybercore is done. Last game, he made a Twilight Council at the front. And once again, he's coming up on 100 gas here. Yeah, I think he is. Could be a Robo, obviously, but that would be a little bit funky. It is once again going to be a Twilight Council as part of the wall off. So Haas, looking at that previous game, thinking to himself, you know what, that went wrong because my detection was, was off. Nothing with the build order really went wrong. I mean, he was in a really good spot. If he wouldn't have lost those workers, he would have been fine. Double gas, right? Or, or double upgrades, rather. Double gas only, I believe, actually. And then a really nice economy at the third nexus already as well. Is he really thinking of... No, no, no. He's just scouting. Okay, I was going to say. That would be ridiculous. That would be a little bit too quick. Okay. Here goes the little hit squad. This time around, these units are going across the map a little bit later. At this point, Bion doesn't even know if there's a Protoss player out there. There hasn't been a GLHF or anything along those lines either, so... You never know. Probe is gonna go ahead and sit at the watchtower. Hmm? Eh, this probe was thinking about making a third nexus. Yeah, okay. He sees the units right now. Goes for a gateway instead. I kind of like it. You know what would have been nice? Okay, I'm gonna shut up about it now, but... Those Reapers just go into the main base uncontested. It's once again, by the way, that charge upgrade super quickly. Hellion, we know where that one's gonna go. Hello, Hellion. No? Okay, never mind. I thought the Hellion was going to go straight into the natural, like we saw in the previous game, but instead Haas is going to make a wall off at the front using a shield battery. Do we really not go... I don't understand... Okay, I don't understand what these two structures are doing here. I understand that the early game eco has to be tight, but is this really... <laughs> Losing a bunch of workers, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense in my head. Anyhow, charge is done. I mean, charge usually... There's, there's the forge. That is the very first forge, of course. Um, uh, normally, we see charge being used as a pretty aggressive opener. But I guess it's going to be pretty sweet as well when it comes to getting rid of a bunch of those early game Terran units. Okay. So, the main problem, obviously, is the robo facility timing here. He doesn't have a robo facility just yet. And Yeah, okay. Bjorn, once again, <laughs> opting to go for the same build order. He goes for the cloaking field over here together with a Banshee. That's gonna allow him a pretty good amount of uh, damage potential once again. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? He's just going for the exact same build order as he did in the previous one too. Or at least mostly the same. Yep, there's the double Widow Mind drop headed across the map. This is a, uh, a copy-paste of game number one so far. It's just on a different map. There's the second forge, by the way. And we also do have a, a Robo Facility coming up. Curious to see where he's gonna put his observers this time. Okay. Yeah, charge is pretty good actually when it comes to the... <laughs> you don't normally see charge being used as a... Ooh, careful, careful, careful. Okay, he gets it. We don't normally see charge being used as a way to clean up Widow Mine drops. 
but that actually worked surprisingly well. So again, let's let's look at the actual situation right now. He needs to start up an observer. Anyways, he's got double upgrades coming. He's got charge already done. He's got everything he needs. Okay, there's the observer right away. He's got everything that he needs to hypothetically defend against what it is that the Terran's going for. Plus, he's got double upgrades and a bigger economy. I mean, this is really quite good here for our pros. Actually, a pretty sick build. Imagine if we would have lost those five workers to this. Okay, fine. I'm going to shut up about it. Here's that, uh, that Banshee. Observer, hello? Where'd the Observer go? Oh no. Oh my god, it was once again heading across the map. Are you kidding me? I mean, the problem is obviously he doesn't know anything, right? He hasn't scouted anything in this game. You know what you might want to do, Haas? Go for a double Observer, okay? Like, one Observer towards the other side, one Observer to... You know, that'd be really nice. I think that'd be really good. Anyways, Marine drop coming in right now. Hey, compared to losing 33 workers though, 9 worker kills is uh, much, much better here for Haas. Still finds himself at a very nice economical advantage. He's already thinking about going for a fourth Nexus as well. Benshee in the third base gets killed. Recalled towards the main base to try and get rid of this dropship. And, well, the dropship is already gone as it sees the recall. A couple of photon cannons here, okay. And there's that third CC once again from Byun. It's honestly very, very late if you compare it to Haas. Yeah, Haas starts up the fourth Nexus. Okay. So, we finally get to see what Haas actually had in mind, right? In the previous game, he didn't really get to his full powers. I think in this game, he's got a lot more wiggle room. The problem is, when you've got charge and all that done as well, 1-1 one, one is finished too, I don't think that Byun really can go for an attack here very easily. I mean, how many gateways do we have? We've got six gateways, there's a couple more coming up. Yeah, he can maybe go for some drop play, but a big parade push through the center of the map would likely be a mistake because Haas has got really good upgrades on his units already. Did he? He's got very little gas. Okay, he's only mining five probes in gas right now. I'm assuming that's intentional. He doesn't have a lot of gas, so he actually can't make that many units. Okay, yeah, so what little gas he's got, he's spending on mostly upgrades here as well as an immortal. He will probably spend the next set of gas on the plus two ground armor as well. I think that will probably be pretty smart. But yeah, this is what the man does. In case you're unfamiliar, this is the exact opposite of the aggressive cheese he used to go for. This is a macro cheese, an eco cheese instead, which I think is excellent. At this point, Bjorn must have clicked on one of his opponent's units as well and realized the situation with the upgrades. He's finishing up his own infantry weapons at a conventional time here. I mean, nothing all too crazy there anyways. And yeah, it's definitely a little bit later than his opponents, although yeah, Haas hasn't really doubled down on his upgrade advantage, right? He's got a a very quick double fort situation, but I kind of feel like this, this he's never planning on mining this gas either, is he? This gas will not be able to mine with any less than like six workers. Anyhow, ooh, Robo Bay. Interesting. I would have liked to see him make use of that second fort a little bit quicker is what I'm getting at. Yeah, okay. I, did, I actually do think it was a mistake then, because he only had two in one of those gases. Anyways, Zealot's finally marching across the map, that immortal acting coup as well. Not really getting a whole lot of work done, because of course on Data C it is a relatively easy to defend. Units at the Watchtower, see that Protoss army coming in from a mile away, and he's gonna pick up and get on out of there. Unsurprisingly. So what exactly is the plan now, Bjorn? Because I'm looking at the worker count at this point. It's 82 versus 68. Fourth Nexus is already coming up. We're getting to the point where in a, a Zerk versus Terran, I would be talking about how the Zerk is starting to outgrow the Terran player. But Haas playing a very Zergy style of Protoss here, ready to swarm over his opponent. He has been mixing it up a little bit though, so... I think he now realized that those upgrades were maybe not at the most optimized timing as he chrono boosts out the armor upgrade, but rather than just sticking around on a bunch of zealots and stalkers, he is mixing in some higher tier units too. My god, that's a lot of gateways though. He's adding on five more gateways and he's already got eight. Thirteen gateways bothers me a little bit. If you could maybe make it fourteen, that'd be great. Thank you very much, Haas. I just want clean numbers, okay? Team even, okay? D don't give me 13... Th th no, that's not a Kudo Rider. It's not a right amount of gateways. Anyways, this little Zealot roll-by. Not getting that much work in, but at the very least, the Terran army is pushed back home. 
Bjorn seemed to me like he was readying himself for an attack, and now he's like, you know what, I guess I'll sit back and go for a couple Vikings and all that instead. That will suit Haas just fine. Okay, he also stopped making workers for a little bit, but now that the fifth Nexus is done, he's once again adding on probes, making what I saw was five at a time here just a little bit ago. Shield battery coming up, a couple of fountain cannons coming up as well. Very nice. I especially like the start of this uh, of this build order, though. Like, th the way in which he got that, uh, you know, all of the structures in the early game. I mean, I don't really like the gateway and uh, the side, but I've, I've addressed that, right? I feel like the double fort start against Protoss, actually, or against Terran Rodders, really seemed very solid. Not bad at all. Okay, so now Haas is ready. He's ready to actually start fighting. He's maxed out. Going up against the Terran player, though, who's also maxed out. Those Widow Mites getting absolutely tremendous connections. A lot of resources in the bank deals still, though, for Haas, who's now going to yeah, use some of that money to reinforce his army as well. That Widow Mine did a lot more damage to the Terran army than it did to the Protoss, I believe. Fourth Command Center heading on over in this direction, but Beyond with good control is keeping a lot of this alive, and there's no detection here. We're still just at one observer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem, I guess, when you play these low-gas builds. It feels like you can't afford any detection, but honestly, man... We've seen a lot of Widow Mines out of Bion in this game so far. I, I don't think it's a bad idea to get some detection in that army, because these Widow Mines now get to fight another day. Plus three here. Coming up for the infantry weapons for Bion. That upgrade is already nearly done here for Haas. Who's going for the extended thermal lens? It all seems a little bit disconnected, right? What Haas is doing. Like, none of it, it. Like, the early game was really nice, but after that, it's been a little bit messy. Anyways, messy or not, he's setting himself up for a nice sandwich over here if he can. He now to finally decides to pull the trigger. Widow Mines retargeted on top of the Zealots once more. Excellent control by, 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 by Bjorn, who's trying to make the best of this situation. That is an awful lot of Protoss, though. Zealots just swarming whatever they can. But he's holding on. He's holding on. Fourth Command Center has now grown a nice little planetary fortress hat. You love to see that. And that will make it significantly harder for Haas to actually move in here. He's now going, though, for a triple disruptor transition. Bjorn has absolutely no idea that this is happening. Obviously, Bjorn, though, very comfortable when it comes to microing against that sort of army composition, but there's always that first moment, right, when the disruptors first come out where you might not be paying as much attention. Okay, here's the disruptor army. Uh, he sees it right now. Okay, that's nice to know. SCV ready. I don't know if that's really that important, though. Okay, here come the bowling balls. Getting a little bit of damage in. One of the bowling balls. Okay. <laughs> Coming from very far away, trying to make the best of that situation too, but Bjorn doing an amazing job holding on here. Yep, I think I think most of the time when Haas plays a game on the ladder against your average Terran player, he would have won the game at this point. Now you gotta play a little bit longer, Haas. What exactly do we do here? Well, he's got another Nexus taken in the top left-hand corner. He is already at 95 workers, but he's gonna add on four more. Can you make a hundred, please? I like the clean numbers, apparently, today. That would be really nice, dude. You can't just sit... Okay, nice snipe there. You can't just sit on 99 probes. I mean, you could saturate a little bit more of this. Uh, I don't know if we're going to see a hundred workers. Doesn't really matter, though. Okay, that Zealot Warping gets the Knight. Uh, Bjorn sending some of his army over here. Is it enough to kill that Nexus? I'm not convinced that it is, okay? One of those uh, ghosts just ran into the Purification Nova as well. A couple of them, though, get hotkeyed forward. That is not where they are supposed to be. And this is, once again, a really efficient fight right here for Bjorn. Sniping a bunch of those heavy hitters at the cost of a bunch of Marines and Marauders. Getting all of the Metavex out. That is totally okay right there for Bjorn. Oh, I tried opening up the Battle Report again. I really need to change that hotkey up, but I don't think I can. Anyways, there's no, there's no Battle Report. But... What we do have right here is an indicator of the amount of resources that Haas has lost at this point in the game. And we're talking at, yeah, we're talking 17,000 versus 11,000. I mean, that is a lot. I guess I can show it on this screen as well. Wait, what? Oh, I guess one of them also is, but that doesn't add up. Anyways, 
Um, there's an aggression happening right here at the bottom section of the map. Good amount of damage being done, though, by Haas right now at the opponent's third base as well. Maybe he's losing one of his outer bases, but... Yeah, he wanted to go for the juggler here on the other side of the map. Biondo. Got a chin protector on, I guess. Wearing, like, one of those full-sized helmets. One of those medieval suits. So, you know, he's, he's not... The juggler is well protected here. Love to see that. 17 SCVs have gone down here, though. That is a pretty healthy amount, but Bion is now heading on over towards the top left-hand corner as well, as these guys accidentally become next-door neighbors. Neither of them really want that, but what are you gonna do about it? Ooh, YOLO drop here in the bottom right-hand corner. I think that's that group of units that previously killed the Nexus here, as well as a bunch of probes. A lot of damage being done, though, all over the map right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very aggressive game here. Bjorn really wants to kill this Nexus, and I think he's gonna get it. And after he gets this base, he'll probably... Can we... No? What? Uh, he could have just li literally like, blown at that, that Nexus with all of those, those Marauders at once. It probably would have died. Anyways, at the same time, he's also microing in the bottom right, so that's probably as to why he wasn't paying attention to that as cleanly as we would have liked to see. He's busy microing multiple battles at once, and he'll probably come back. A couple of zealots right there get killed as well. Disruptor gets targeted down, but a second disruptor does connect with some of the bio. Stimpak once again reactivated though, as Bjorn is on the attack. One Marauder here charged with killing that newly made Nexus. Okay, good Widowmine connections over there as well here for the Terran player from Korea. Can't believe that that base actually lives. 35 workers on it. I thought that Bion was gonna get that base though, and then also the one in the top left, and now he got neither of those two structures. Which is actually gonna make this a whole lot more difficult. Yeah, as long as Haas is sitting around this section of the map, he really needs to move some of those probes over. Anyway, as long as he's sitting out here, his income is looking really good. He can obviously, yeah, just warp in a lot more reinforcements, and it's difficult for Bion to actually then kill all of this. That's not a nice hit, though, on those Widow Mines, or with those Widow Mines, on one of the Disruptors. Matter of fact, drop once again, heading down south, going after that base at the 6 o'clock position. Don't think it's gonna survive. But again, the real fight is happening up here. Planetary Forge is acquired, though, and now with these well-upgraded Zealots, apparently he does want to take the fight to one of those big boys as well. Planetary is gonna go down, but at the same time, a Nexus falls all the way at the bottom of the map. 13 Zealots coming up. Can we do one Purification Nova? No, apparently we can't spare it. Ah, oh, man, we still have... S <laughs> 35 out of 16, and there's a full base right over here with a couple idle probes. Ugh. Has clearly uh, trying his very best. Now we're finally sending a bunch of probes in that direction. Turns out 330 actions per minute on average. 800 even. Uh, apparently it's not enough. Starcraft's a hard game, okay? Couple of EMPs going down though, trying to soften up a couple of those disruptors. One of the ghosts right there makes a flip as it services right here on Data C. I guess it's, uh, I guess at least that it's gonna be floating up. I don't know. Ooh, a couple of zealots misrallied over here, and they also get the knight. Bjorn is starting to look really solid here. His economy is maybe not as good as he would like it to be, but he's got a, a decent amount of it. And He's trading incredibly efficiently in this game, plus he constantly is denying that base at the bottom, right? Now the fourth Nexus that has built is gonna be in some trouble as well, and there's really no units over here. Massive Zealot run by though, set up here by the Taiwanese Protoss player. Okay, and he's forcing his opponent to pick up. A couple of Stalkers blink forward to go after the full Medivex. Good control right there by him. Now the Observers are also here, right? So that's pretty important. So he can actually clean up those Widow Mines as they decide to uh, stick around for a little bit longer. Okay, so now that this base is saturated, yeah, once again, Haas grabs a nice economical lead. Haas is trying to see if he can push the fight away from that top left and corner by engaging on the right side of the map himself. This is one way to alleviate some of that pressure. So far, it's working. A lot of SCVs are going down. Disruptor Purification Nova's forcing that army to back off. Okay, Zealots decide to disengage. Yeah, I could probably fight that if you want to, but apparently they want to back off and maybe come in back for a little bit more here in just a moment after that army disappears. 
Although he's bleeding out quite a few zealots here for what seems to be essentially free. As long as this base over here is mining, life's pretty good here, okay? For, for Hasidus. As long as these bases are up and running, everything is going to be A-OK. -okay. As long as those probes all have a place, life's good. He is starting to run out of money, however, but he's got a massive army, though. Now suddenly with a 40-ish supply lead... This is a massive fight. A lot of those zealots derping around between the minerals right there and the command center and then a wall of marines and marauders. Observers getting picked off. Okay, not bad at all. Okay, a couple of misrallied marines here as well by Byun. Uncharacteristic mistake. It's just sending in so many units. This massive economy of his, man, this entire game long. It's so wild. We've had so many worker losses, but both players still have a tremendous amount of economy. I think that Haas is actually winning in a macro game against Bjorn. <laughs> GG. Nicely done. That's sick. And that means that our final game, it's taking place on the map Moondance. Where are we going to put our first pile on Haas? Are we going to... No, we're not. We're definitely not, are we? No, no, no. He needs he needs the additional mineral income, okay, that this probe can provide. It may come at the cost of a bunch of probes later on when those uh, those reapers jump into the main base. Although, to be fair, it's not very common to go for that little hit squad of units, right? So maybe uh, Haas was looking at that and he's like, you know what? What are the chances my opponent plays the exact same build once again? So I will just play the exact same build myself once again. And then Bjorn was like, you know what? It looks to me like you're playing the exact same build. So, you know, I will do the same thing. Is he going to go quick double gas again? Yep, I think so. So Bjorn is really liking the aggression, apparently. I wonder if it's once more going to be a Twilight Council as part of the wall off. That would be kind of funny. Last game, he went for a 19 supply Nexus. Well, he's already queuing up another probe, though. No, he's... Eh, is he mixing it up? Pretty sure it was 19 supply. Well, he's, he's queuing up a bunch of probes here. Okay. Unless he cancels those workers. He cancels one of them. Goes for a 20 supply nexus. Fair enough. Maybe he's not so rigid, right? So most of the Protoss players out there are very, very build order dependent. So I would say Terran has quite a bit of wiggle room with their strategies. Right? I mean, it's not super strict, as in like, well, when your factory finishes, you can go for a starport, and when your barracks finishes, you may as well start up a factory. You don't have to be as on point with the exact supply timings, is what I'm trying to say. Protoss generally, though, has to be quite strict with that. Zerk can obviously mostly just wing it, right? Like, worst case scenario with Zerk, you've got some extra money, guess what you do? You make some extra queens. No Zerk player has ever been bothered at that, but yeah, at this level of play, obviously, both of these guys should be playing pretty strictly, but... Small deviations here and there. These gases, man. That's apparently all he really needs here. I didn't actually catch when he added on additional gas in that previous game, but it probably was after saturating the fourth base, if I were to make a guess. Is it going to be a Twilight Council? Is <laughs> a Twilight Council once again at the front. Most of the time, Terrans have to jump through a couple hoops to figure out what kind of strategy the opponent is playing. But apparently that's not the case right here for Haas. He is more than happy for his opponent to know exactly what's going on. So one of the reasons I think why Bjorn is playing such an aggressive start, though, is because he doesn't want to be caught off guard, right? Like, he is just making sure that he... Yeah, is not going to be going up against one of those cheesy builds from Haas. Maybe there's something that has, well, has been showing recently to Bjorn, or maybe it's some of the players that Bjorn has been talking to, right? I would imagine, at the very least, when you're facing off in a tournament, so this particular series was from DreamHack Atlanta, when you're facing off against a player like Haas at a tournament, you ask your best friends as well, right? To, you know, know if they have any experience against him whatsoever. Just to make sure that he's aware of any cheesy strategies that Haas may have been preparing, and... There is a good chance that one of the other Terran players has gone up against a more aggressive build order. None of that, though, is happening in this particular game. As Haas is once again looking for a third Nexus already. Nice and early. So this time around, by the way, it is not charge first. It's going to be blink first. And he's even letting that shield battery finish. I thought it was just for blocking the, the Reaper, but 
the Reaper. Yeah, it is indeed going to be available. And because of that, I think as well that Bion is looking at this and he's like, you know what? I need to be careful. He will start up a Raven here because of it. And that will obviously keep him safe against any sort of uh, Dark Templar aggression that could be coming out here. Bion will start falling behind, though, economically here moving forward if he's not careful. Probes are coming out two at a time. Obviously, that second mule is going to be really sweet. But it's really easy to accidentally fall behind in these sort of circumstances. There is, by the way, once again, an attempted double Widow Mine drop. This time around, no Banshee play. A little bit different. Blink is finishing up momentarily. Does he want to show it? No, he does not want to show it just yet. Could have maybe tried to jump after that Reaper, but probably wouldn't have gotten it anyways. Okay. So there's the Forge. There's the Robo Facility. Last time around, he had the... He had the second Forge already done at this point as well, right? So definitely a little bit different than what we previously saw. So now we're going to go into the, the additional gateways. Okay. You know what? Maybe it's part of the build order. I've seen Bjorn throw a bunch of those supply depots out of the Terran uh, High Heavens. Still don't know where they come from. A lot of people have hypothesized that apparently uh, those supply depots come from the Hyperion or something that is flying above this battlefield. That would be kind of messed up, okay? If that is actually the lore accurate answer, that somewhere above this like space platform called Moon Dance, Jimmy Rayner is sitting inside of his battle cruiser, just kind of looking down. He could have just stopped all of this from happening before. There's no way that that is correct. I'm pretty sure the orbital commander something. I think I can probably like communicate with a bunch of resources that are orbiting this place. And then from that, it can construct a mule that it calls down. And, and I think that's probably something. It's probably something along those lines. But anyways, he's been using those supply depot hats quite a bit. I've noticed this in quite a few of Beyond's games. And I find it hard to believe that he is consistently missing uh, yeah, supply depots in the early game. I'm pretty sure he's actually doing it on purpose. Maybe it's part of his build order. Or maybe not. I don't know. That does seem a little bit funky. Because obviously every time you make one of those supply depots with a little hat on it, sure, you get an extra depot, but you also lose what could have been a mule. Anyhow, third command center is going to start up here momentarily for Bjorn, but that is right around the time as Haas is setting up a fourth nexus as well. This push that's coming up right now from Bjorn is going to have to be a pretty big one. Now, he is lining this up excellently, though. This is one of the classical attacks, of course, with Stimpak, Combat Shields, plus one infantry weapons. Is he going to pull the boys? Okay, I thought for a second he was going to pull the boys. I think he's just protecting here against the uh, the Zealots instead. That would have been wild if he decided to go for an all-out assault here. A complete all-in might not be the best thing to do. But what Haas is doing right now with this uh, Prism Drop is buying a lot of time. Okay, these could be lethal. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, good. Um, yeah, he's buying a lot of time. So, as he's going for a new Nexus, he's trying his very best to just constantly keep the opponent pinned back, right? He needs, obviously, a little bit of time to build up that economy. Once again, an attempted Medivac flyby here in the natural, but the Stalkers are still patrolling. I think that Hass is reading this game accurately so far. He knows that his opponent will likely be going for an attack here. So, he's just waiting. Trying to build up his own economy, trying to make the best of this situation here, because he knows that eventually he should be able to outgrow him. Gets a Medivac too. That is a Miserelli right there from Bjorn. Third command center in the bottom right hand corner. Finally done. But already, I mean, Haas has been happily making those workers. Okay. Now that Raven that was hanging out behind the main base. Apparently this one's getting a little bit of work in. Not bad at all. Yeah, auto turrets being obnoxious. That Raven actually having a lot of success right now. That shouldn't have happened, honestly. That Raven should not be able to get eight worker kills like that. That is pretty shaky, and he's actually still got enough energy as well for another auto turret, so... Wouldn't be uh, surprised if that one is gonna drop somewhere here in the top left-hand corner as well at some point. Robo Bay coming up. So all the roads eventually do lead towards a similar setup, right? So Haas right now, once again with Double Forge, once again with a Robo Bay. We know what he wants to do. I think action at this point, though, is on Bjorn. Honestly, economically speaking, he's fine. Yeah, despite the fact that Haas has had that fourth Nexus up for a little while already. Economically speaking, Bjorn is looking really strong. Is this what we're going to do? 
I mean, to be fair, Haas has had very little scouting in this series. He's probably only got one observer. No, he's got no observer at all. So he's got a robo facility and he... Oh, yeah, okay. So he hasn't, he hasn't set up any of those pylons that we see coming up quite frequently, right? So we oftentimes see a pylon over here, a pylon over here, a pylon over here, just to scout these incoming metavec drops. This is uh, something that Bjorn has been doing for the better part of a decade. He loves doom dropping. And there is a chance he's going to get into the opponent's main base completely uncontested. It's unlikely that Protoss would be charging at this ramp, right? At this wall off over here. Or up that ramp. At this wall off. I don't think that's a particularly good choice. So now the matter of fact drop comes in. Unscouted. I think Vision really has been the main weakness here in Hassa's playstyle. Okay, one of the fortress. We get targeted down very easily, so that one will go down. Ground armor level 1 gets the knight because of it. Now suddenly there is a secondary Terran army over at the 4th base as well. Widowmind's connecting here with the Zealots. Good stutter stepping here by Bjorn making the best on both sides. I think he's winning both of those battles so far. There are a couple Zealots available. Lads. Hello, guys. Oh, army hotkey, man. <laughs> okay, finally they get added into the mix as well. This is gonna get cleaned up. But in the main base, yeah, a lot of damage is already being done. Colossus here available now, so that's nice. That one is going to be shooting some lasers here at some of this Terran army. That Marauder picked up, I believe, yep, yeah, inside of that Medivac over there. But now suddenly Bjorn finds himself at a 40 supply lead. I like the build that Haas is doing in this series, but I think it, it lacks a little bit of that... A little bit of that refinement, right? Where you look at like a hero game and you're like, okay, I don't even know what you would do. You look at one of the max specs builds and you're like, okay, that looks absolutely perfect and really, really solid. Whereas right now, I feel like Haas is just sort of bleeding out. I mean, he is, he is dealing some damage on the other side of the map too. And this could actually, yeah, get quite a bit of work done. The problem is, you can deal all the economical damage you want in a game of StarCraft 2. But if you can't address your opponent's main army, you'll end up losing the game. So there it is. Bjorn ends up winning this series 2-1.